Well, good morning, guys. <clears throat> well, it's been a little while since I posted the video, but I wanted to get back out here and to show you guys. I'm, I'm still, I haven't given up on 80th century stuff. I've just been really busy. Um, if you haven't seen, I did a trip with Josh Schrock from uh, the Frontier Quest videos. So uh, check out his channel and you can see a couple things I did with him over New Year's. And uh, But today I'm out uh, trying to get a little hike in here before things get busy again in summer. We had a lot of snowfall last winter here in Minnesota and I want to get back to my shelter a mile back this way and uh, just see if it caved in um, I wouldn't be surprised if it did but uh, it'd be nice if it didn't so I'll just uh, bring you along and I'll go for a little hike and just see what we can find this trail's got some large puddles in it Trying to avoid them with my moccasins. I don't want to get wet quite yet if I can help it. Right up through these spruce trees is a meadow, which is one of my favorite camping spots. shoot so a little meadow here surrounded by all these black spruce trees all the way beyond that is just all aspens again but this little meadow here is kind of a sandy ridge and uh, it might have been cleared once by homesteaders in the early 1900s uh, based on some mounds back here it might have been cleared but uh, now it's just all part of the state forest. Right around this corner back here is a little camping spot we made. I built a clay oven back here. Looks like the wind uncovered it. Uh, we'll check this out here. Got a little bit of damage. Hey, it looks like I'm not sure what that is. It almost looks like a bear took a swipe in it. You can see claw marks right through the side of it. Mm. Looks like something was digging at it. Is it looking through for bugs or it's still fairly hard for being exposed. A little bit of water runoff down here. <clears throat> hey, check this out. Looks like something took a either took a swipe at it or something. And here you can see my hand and those claw marks are tighter than your finger could be. Right up inside there. I don't know what they would have been doing with it. And on this side, you can kind of see the claw marks scraped into the clay. The ground out here is on a sandy ridge. And all these little spots in the ground are where these little bees kind of hatch and claw their way out of. 
they're not ants. They kind of look like ant mounds. But these are actually where all these little insects that are flying. I don't know if you can see them in the camera, but they're just flying everywhere. Like little, little bees. Beautiful spot here. Hey guys, I just found this little structure here, and I think what this is is an old bear bait station. These guys will kind of set up the structures the bears kind of have to turn into it, and then they cover their bait with logs and stuff to keep the birds out of it, and the bears have to kind of rummage through it right here, and uh, you know, try to get the bait, and that gives the hunter time to get a shot off at them, because if I turn around, only about 20 yards from here. There's kind of a clear lane to that big spruce tree. And all the branches are cut down all along this side. This was somebody's hunting spot one time. I'm sure of it. But I'm going to keep hiking through these spruce. The spruce run out into a little slough that might be too full to cross right now. I don't know, but I need to get across that to get back to my shelter. So we'll see what happens. Hey guys, there's kind of an old trail that runs between these aspens and these spruce behind me. But the trail it's all wet and puddly. You can see a few piles of snow there yet. So I'm sticking in these spruce trees where it's higher and drier. But uh, I'm not liking how that looks. It might be too wet to get across out here. Made it to that slough, but it looks like it should be crossable. Okay, guys, so these two little ditches here run out of the swamp back in there. So these are this is a swamp fed little runoff. And this runs down to this little natural bowl, but the beavers a couple years ago had dammed this up all along the one side. And this whole slough filled up into a pond. And then it either broke or the DNR came and destroyed it. Filled the water off and it runs down into a river. Okay guys, this is the old beaver lodge. An entrance down in there. One over there with that little ditches. They can take the ditches out so they can swim up underneath the lodge. Water used to be all up over this, so they could just swim right under.
Well, it looks like she survived the winter. the greens I put on the side to help block some wind and rain. They're all dried up and brittle now. They could be replaced. Use this firewood. But I made it all out of, all out of dead wood to start with. Well, it's not doing too bad. The ground is just saturated down here though. Made it in the fall, it was dry. But now with all the snow melt and rain, that moss growing in here, it's pretty damp. I'm not sure if I want to sleep in here. You really have to build yourself up. So according to Nathan Boone's description of loading a rifle, now this is not a rifle, but I haven't seen it done. And his description mentioned taking a feather out of their hat and sticking it into the touch hole or the flash hole before they loaded their main charge. And I don't, haven't seen guys do that, but I think what that allows for is to make sure that your touch hole or your flash hole is clear for every shot. So this way, you don't have to pick it after you load it. It's all ready to go. Now I've been kind of a uh, minimalist shooter I like to use bees nest so I take a bunch of this wasp nest and I wad it up stick it down in my barrel take my ramrod pack that on top of my powder and then if I'm loading shot I will stick the shot down in there So uh, this is my little shot container. The uh, English style flask head, I believe, is a little bit post 18th century, early 19th century, but I have it right now and it is very convenient. Then once that's done, I take more of this bee's nest and I will usually use a little bit less then I put over the powder. Pack it down. Then the gun comes back up and the feather comes out of the touch hole. And that way it's completely clear for loading. Because you don't want your touch hole, your flash hole, filled with powder. Because if that happens, when the priming goes off in the pan, it has to burn the powder out of the way to get to your main charge. And that's actually slower than if 
your uh, priming charge goes off and the flash will shoot the hot flames down the hole into your main charge in your barrel and that's faster than if it has to burn up powder out of the way. So that's if you have the powder in there sometimes you get a otherwise just and that uh, is a tip uh, and uh, I'm guessing the, the feather in there also just keeps anything else from getting in there and uh, make sure you're all ready to go. Alright guys, so that was only like a 12 yard shot, but you can see how heavy that pattern was on that log. That is uh, one dead piece of birch. Alright, well that's going to be all for today. Appreciate you hanging out and uh, keep trekking.